Okay, go ahead. Go yeah, on, yeah. I mean, we just went over that. I mean, it's the same word used two different ways for right. two different kinds of things. All There's right. a difference one between is, descriptive is, laws and, and proscriptive laws. Okay. Okay. That's right. A good point. Descriptive That's laws are we look at what is happening and we see the way that nature behaves, right? Yes. And we and we find regularities. And then we say, well, that is the way it behaves. We'll call that the law, right? Okay. The law of gravity, right? That clears that Laws up. of motion. That makes sense. We're, we're using the word law yes. for a thing we simply observe happening in nature. But the reason why things in nature happen, uh, that, that things in nature follow those, uh, those laws, is because of the physical properties of those things interacting. Yes. Okay? It's not because some outside force is saying, why, you know, someone has dropped an object, therefore, why well, command that object to fall to the earth? No. A, a gravity is a natural thing that just happens. Yes. Okay. All right. So the reason I brought up evolution was to get back to the, the question of origins. I mean, Matt's advice is probably the best thing to do is go look for Lawrence Krauss's uh, lecture, which will explain this in more detail. But just for the moment, to make this a little easier for your mind to deal with, okay. right? Yeah. You have to, when, it, it's not exact, um, it is true in a, in a sense that, uh, that the uh, naturalistic view of the origin of the universe and the religion, religious view of the origin of the universe come back to some point where things appear to start, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay? Now, the details and the, the, the much more complex, deep uh, physics details of that, you get from that le lecture. But there is a difference between the naturalistic view and the religious view, okay? The okay. naturalistic view is at that, at that starting point, yeah. there's very, very, very simple stuff, right? Okay. There's a hot, uh, I'm not sure what the right, plasma is probably not even the right word, right? And we have a physicist here and he can't you know, jump in in the middle of this. But, <laughs> it, but there's just a initial condition that's very hot, very dense, right? I mean, matter hasn't even uh, condensed out of this stuff yet. That's what you have on the one hand, incredibly simple. And then on the religious view, you have an intelligence. And an intelligence is an incredibly complicated thing. So between those two views of that starting point, right, yeah. the naturalistic view is the simpler one, the one that takes much less of a leap to accept. See what I'm saying? Okay, okay. And if you can accept that, if you can accept evolution, that, that diversity and complexity and things emerge from the interaction of stuff, yeah. all within natural laws, then you should be able to accept that the that the you know uh, uh, galaxies and stars and planets could uh, could form out of, according to natural laws out of that very simplistic set of starting conditions, right? Okay. That's what I'm saying. Look look at the difference that what religion is asking you to believe at that starting moment yeah. is something much less likely. Right, much more of a stretch, something hugely more complex, an intelligence, uh -huh. an intelligence that has the, not only that, but it has the power to guide everything else that's happening. Right? Okay. That's what religion is asking you to believe. Yeah, yeah. And, and that, physics is just asking you to I'm believe. sort of having some, some problems at right there. Okay. Uh, my, my biggest problem is what we're talking about, is what we're talking about is that starting point, man, that one initial starting okay. point. And that, I guess if I can just we're, wrap we're my recommending mind around you, that. We're recommending you watch that lecture. That's what I need to do, the, huh, man? The, the other thing that I'd say is that, um, not quibbling over the ideas of nothing or whatever else, um, we're at a point where we understand that at some point the universe began to exist in the current form that, that we observe it. Uh -huh. And we've identified, we, we label that in, in most, ter in most uh, most of the time we label that as Big Bang. Big, Big Bang, bang yeah, Big yeah. Bang cosmology. I mean, it's, it's already been confirmed to the extent possible that we can confirm it by cosmic microwave background radiation yeah. that it did in fact happen. So then you say, what happened before the Big Bang? Yeah. Well, maybe, hang on, <laughs> yes. it yeah. may be the case that that is a bad question, that, uh, that the nature of time in the universe is such that that, that question just cannot be asked and, or, you know, with any coherence and therefore cannot be answered. It may also be the case that the answer is, I don't know. I talked well, about this to another atheist once upon a time, and he told me that exact thing. He said, that's one of those things, Tracy, because he got kind
kind of he got kind of frustrated with me because I kept going back to that one point, and he said, "You know what? That's one of those things that are just unknowable." And you no, 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 no. How many knows was that? I did not say unknowable. No, I didn't say you. I said I was talking to you. I, no I understand. I understand, but you were equating me. You telling me that that was not that. That's not what you said, but that's what he said. And right. So let's not talk about what he said. Let's okay. let's have this conversation between us. <laughs> right. I didn't say unknowable. I said that is something that we simply don't know. We may be able to find out. And the, the reason I'm the reason I'm harping on that point is because it's going to matter a whole bunch here in just a second. All right. All right. What you're saying is that instead of saying we don't know you find it more plausible that there is an intelligence, an intelligence for which you have no evidence, and your argument is that either this is just what I believe or this is just what seems more plausible to more me. More plausible, yes. And, and, and I would ask you, how on earth can you determine that it's more plausible when you have no evidence to support it? Well, it's the same thing. You have no evidence to support what you're saying. Either, no, 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 no. the beginning of the thing. Now, you no. have some evidence as far as the Big Bang, and then I agree with no, you on that. No, Tracy. And you have some evidence when it comes to evolution. But you yourself have no evidence. We're both having to take a leap of faith how this whole thing got no, started. No, we're not, Tracy. Degree, Tracy, degree. Tracy, no leap of faith. Here, look. Here's a line where this pen is. This okay. represents the Big Bang. And I'm saying... I don't know what happened before that. Okay. And you're saying you believe that it's most plausible that an intelligence caused it. I'm not taking a leap of faith. How dare you represent that I am? You're taking a leap of faith. You're saying that you find it more plausible that there's an intelligence behind it. And I asked, how is it that you find this more plausible mm -hmm. without evidence to support it? Mm -hmm. And instead of presenting evidence, instead you tried to equate our positions as if we're both taking a leap of faith when that's not remotely true. I got you. And you'll remember, you'll remember, you'll remember that mm -hmm. I said it was important a minute ago mm -hmm. that I did not say unknowable. I said I don't know. And you're okay it is with not that for only now. it is not only important because and it's, you're okay with that for now. I'm not only okay with it. Okay. I'm overjoyed go. with it right. because <laughs> because I have not taken a walk down the credulous lane of arguments of ignorance that allow me to posit the existence of a creator for which I have no in, no evidence at all. Because what happens as soon as I start believing that is it curtails all further investigation down that path. A second you s accept an answer is the most plausible one uh -huh. without evidence, yeah. your journey is done. As soon as you say, I don't know, but let's see if we can find out, that's when the journey begins. It's all, not a leap a of faith. Me, dude. I got to tell It you. is not a leap of faith. No, it's not, because you're not going to commit either way. I mean, to, to have a leap of faith, you're right, I, I, I said that wrong, because if you're not going to, if you automatically say, I don't know, it doesn't take a leap of faith to say, I don't know. You're right, bro. There you go. I'm 100%. Hey, man, listen, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me, man. I really sure. do. And I don't know how or why, but these things help me every now and then. I call you guys every now and then, man. And it's bizarre because, let me tell you, man, I probably shouldn't say this on the air, but I'm going to. I play at Thread Guild every other Sunday, and I'm in a gospel band, believe it or not. And I'm a bass player. And when I see you guys there, I just love the freedom of speech because the same place that we can actually go in there and play some music about, you know, the gospel, you can come in there and actually talk about how it's not really relevant to some people. And I just, you know, God bless America, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm a little <laughs> Well, no, I don't know what you're saying. You I know what you're saying, but you know, I'm not with you. <laughs> but hey, stop by sometime. Thanks a lot, Tracy. I All appreciate right, bye -bye, it. Bye-bye, guys. Later. Bye.